It's Brian Preston, the money guy. Be careful who you take advice from. Oh, yeah. So I, w- I went back into the archives of the Money Guy show. By the way, go to moneyguy.com. If you, if you haven't been there in a while, we used to put password protections, had to make you do all, jump through some hoops to get access to our archives. Now it's out there for anybody and everybody. All you have to do is just go to uh, you know uh, the archives section. That's you right. can search. It's searchable. That's how I actually use it. And I found this show from 2009, I believe. I mean, it's crazy. Kevin Bacon and Kira Sedgwick. Mm-hmm. Did I say her name yep, right? I'm, right? I'm horrible. That's right. They were caught up, if you don't remember, with investing with old Uncle Ernie um, Uncle Bernie. Madoff. Old, uh, Uncle, who did I say? You said Uncle Ernie. You actually have an Uncle Ernie, so that was Freudian. So this Uncle is Bernie. Bernie Madoff. And, and what's funny is, is Bernie Madoff, we did a whole show in 2009, and it was hilarious to hear my accent back then. Not, y'all probably love it. He still has an no, accent. So, no, back it's then. even more. It's more country back in 2009. But it was interesting to go through the steps that I noticed, and, 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 and now we've even got more of the story. And like sure. I even, when I was doing research for today's show, I found a YouTube clip where Kevin Bacon had gone on Piers Morgan's show on CNN back in 2011, mm-hmm. and he confessed, or he can, I guess, let it be known or conceded that, quote, most of our savings were lost. Meaning that, because when he described it to Pierce, he said, yeah, we still had homes, but pretty much our investments. All of our liquid net worth. Yeah, it was gone. I mean, because yeah. Pierce try, kept trying to get him to give a, do, a dollar amount. He let it be known it was in the millions yep. or perceived millions, because who knows how much it really was, That's because right. the thing with the way Bernie was doing his pyramid scheme is you don't really know what you have. But they lost the majority of their assets. So how do you protect yourself from, from these type of bad behaviors? Yep. And I'll, I'll, one of the things I was going to throw out there, you know, we mentioned Bernie Madoff. We talked a little bit about this in, in show prep, Brian. But it's not just professionals that you take advice from. Two of the things that we had mentioned is, and you said you saw this a lot earlier in your career, uh, a lot of people have success. Maybe it's someone who starts a really successful business or maybe it's a professional athlete or a celebrity. They will take advice from their peer group who maybe has not experienced that level of success to no. go open up a franchise or go invest in a business or something like that. You know, it's not just financial professionals. You have to kind of consider the source. And then the other thing that we say is how many times have we seen this where you take financial advice from a friend when you really know nothing about their financial situation? Yeah. Where they're telling you, hey, you should go buy this or do this and invest in this thing, where they really have no credibility to be the person telling you to do that. I, I think, you know, just tying into what you said, and this is, this is off the notes, but when I was working with a lot of professional athletes mm-hmm. in the past, it was one of those things when you had successful people, all of a sudden you would have – like I remember one of the things I had talked to some of these athletes about is that they'd have a friend that wanted to be a club promoter mm-hmm. that they would just come in and say, hey, give me some money and I'll split the door with you. And it would they would promise some crazy return. Right. Or a friend just asking you, say, hey, I don't need your money. I just want you to guarantee this your loan because yeah. I'm going to do this real estate deal. If you'll just sign this document, this which is a signature guarantee, mm-hmm. a, a personal guarantee on the loan, um, that's all. You, I don't even need your money. I just need your help so the bank will let me do this deal. Guess what? They all come in. Michael Vick, when he had all the stuff yeah. that went down with the dog fighting and stuff, it, you know, one of the big stories that came out of that was that he, all those loans that he has signature guaranteed on came due at once. It, it was ugly, ugly. So let's get back on how do you avoid the financial crooks. Number one, ask for their ADV. You know, the government, when you talking, when I'm specifically talking about somebody in the financial profession like we are, right. they probably have some type of filing that they have to do with a regulatory body. Whether for us, it's the SEC, the Securities and Exchange yep. Commission. We have to give prospects that form, our brochure, our ADV, just yep. to disclose what's going on with us. This tells you how people get paid. They tell you how their processes. And what's funny is back in 2009, because this all broke at the end of 2008, And it was the financial collapse of the markets at that time that kind of squeezed Bernie into where he had to confess what had happened. But these were the three tips I gave back then, and I think it's still relevant today, is know exactly what you own. And I put in parentheses, simple's good. Remember, we did a whole series, an episode on bringing simple back, because I think a lot of people, and we said this already, started investing things they really had no idea what they were getting into. So know exactly what you own. It's nice when you can see statements. It's nice when you can go and see symbols Mm -hmm. for what you're investing. And you can go pull from Yahoo or Morningstar. Independent sources. Independent sources. You can actually go type in 
the what you supposedly invested in and see what it's worth independent of the guy who sold you this yep. stuff. Um, number two, use an independent custodian. We have a lot of people. Here's what just to kind of let you guys see behind the curtain. When somebody's a prospect, I'm always we don't I haven't seen it in a while because we're we're a few years removed from Bernie Madoff, but probably for the next three years there was a halo effect of every time so we had a prospect say, How do we know you're not Bernie Madoff? Yeah. And I'd say so that's a great question to you, ask. Any you should. I mean, how do you know that you're not just going to take our money and disappear with it? And I always say we use an independent custodian, meaning that when you write a check or you roll assets over or you do account application, it's never for to abound wealth. Right. You're, you're doing it with either Fidelity Investments or Charles Schwab. Yep. You know, there's a th- there's an independent custodian that keeps your money. It's not going into the bank of Bron and Bo. That's right. And that's there to protect you, which is funny because if you go look at the government disclosure forms that Bernie Madoff filled out, he disclosed that he has, and this is quote, on the form, he checked the boxes that he had custody of the cash and bank accounts and, number two, securities. Oof, not so not yet. only was he doing choosing the investments, originating the investments, he was also maintaining the cash and then doing the disclosure of creating monthly account statements. Do you see how there's no separation? No, no check and balance. I mean, the, the checks and balances are non-existent. So you've got to make sure that you have some layers of independence there that will protect you. And also, with an independent custodian, let me, let, 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 let me make you feel better about something else. We know with banks they have what's called FDIC protection. Yep, sure. But with custodians, they have what's called SIPC protection. And then a lot of times that stuff caps out. Mm-hmm. So they, they, the custodian will go out there and buy excess SIPC coverage as well. So that's in case that provider ever goes defunct, runs out of money, your You're actual protected. assets are protected. You get that with an independent custodian, so that really protects you. And then here's the third tip I want to give. If a deal is too good to be true, it probably really is right. too good to be true. Don't go chasing those waterfalls. <laughs> you, you see how I did that? We had I a knew, whole conversation. I knew you were going to go, to go chasing waterfalls. <laughs> you got to get that TLC <laughs> reference in there. But it's... um. But if it really is too good to be true, pay attention and, that's what, and don't fall for I it. I mean, that's really ultimately what exposed Bernie Madoff is if the market's down 38% and you're up 10 12 15%, that just kind of defies common sense a little bit. So make sure you understand what you have going on. That's what he never had a loss year, I don't believe. It's unbelievable. That's what was amazing because I, I read a case study in that episode I did in 2009 where in 2000, 2001, 2002, which were not good years to be an investor, he showed positive performance every one of those years. And everybody who tried to recreate that performance by even buying the asset classes that did good in those mm-hmm. years could not reproduce his behavior, you know, what, what he had done. So be very weary of somebody who, who seems to have this golden touch. 